And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Today, we're talking about how to know this is not God's will. Because I know we talk a lot about how do we know this is God's will, but what are those red flags? What are those warning signs that the Lord sends our way to know that, hey, my spirit is not aligned with this and how do I discern this myself? Let's talk about the seven things to know that this is not God's will. Welcome in Simply Uncaged fam. God bless you. We're here to help fully equip the body of Christ and to be able to reignite that fire back into people and allow that fire to keep up lit (laughs) in Jesus name. Tap in. Thanks for tapping in. If it's your first time in the channel, welcome in. If you guys have always been watching, God bless you. Thanks for supporting. So let's talk about this topic around how to know this is not God's will. How to know it's not God's will. Number one, no peace. He is the Prince of Peace. You ever get that point where you just are making decisions and there's no peace. And you'll know what true peace is when you're in God's presence. And You just have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace isn't attached to your bank account. Peace isn't attached to what you own, what you have. Shoot, we know millionaires that they're like, have all this money in the bank, but there's no peace. True peace. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Okay, peace is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And when I think about peace in general, it's this thing that doesn't allow torment to come. Right? You ever feel tormented? Uh, get into those places where you're just uneasy, tormented. Peace that surpasses all understanding. And I'm going to drop all the links below to all the different uh, Bible scriptures in the description. But no peace is one of the ways to know that, hey, this can't be God's will when I'm making a decision. Number two, no fruit. No fruit to know that this is not God's will. When you're doing ministry, when you're just doing life with the Lord, there must be some fruit that bears. If there's no fruit, it might be an evidence that this is not God's will. Like, I thought everything we do, all that I do is is to really glorify the Lord. Everything I do, whether it's in word and in deed, I give it all to God. So what I'm doing and what you're doing, when you are doing ministry, when you are living a life for Christ, there must be some fruit that bears. And if it doesn't bear any fruit, there might have to be a time where I just need to pivot. I need to switch lanes. I need to switch it up a bit. I need to get realigned back with the Lord to understand like, Lord, how come this isn't bearing fruit? And is it the right season? Because sometimes it could be the right thing in the wrong season. But, you know, even even uh, disobedience that is delayed is still disobedience. And obedience that is ahead of God's timing is still disobedience. So it could be a season issue because the the soil wasn't prepped. Because in reality, it is the Lord that shuts the heavens and opens up the heavens. He's in control. But sometimes we try to build a sprinkler system where we try to build our own irrigation system to try to water onto seeds that will not bear fruit. So we force the growth and we even get to the point where we're overwatering it. Please grow, please grow, please grow. No fruit. Understand the concept of fruit. And you'll be able to understand and discern concepts of the seasons ahead and the season you're in. Number three to know it's not God's will, confusion. Confusion. When it, wherever, it says in the book of James, wherever there is any envy or self-seeking that exists, it says confusion and every evil thing is there. That is what bears fruit. It bears fruit when there's envy, when there's self-seeking desires. It bears the fruit of confusion. And we might look at confusion, and I'm going to share this because we're talking about how to know it's not God's will. Just because you have a lack of knowledge doesn't mean that confusion is in the midst of it, okay? When you're not seeking God, you're not going to get the revelation that's needed. So don't mix up confusion with a lack of knowledge. Don't mix up confusion with a lack of wisdom. Confusion, I looked up confusion, it's instability. It's disorder. It's disturbance. Whenever there's disturbance in making my decisions, a disturbance in my spirit, there might be some confusion there. But again, remember, do not get confusion mixed up with a lack of wisdom, a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding. All right? There's a difference there. So how do I know this is not God's will when I'm moving? There's confusion. And sometimes I just got to be still 
and wait on the Lord. Number four is no counsel or community. If what I'm doing doesn't lead to godly counsel or community feedback of accountability from other people, you know what's interesting is community. Like people are like, yeah, you know, I am the church. I do church by myself. I I do this on my own. And even though that's that's right, like we can have fellowship with the Lord, there's still something that needs to be complete in the body of Christ. It's a body. It's a body of Christ. It's it's not just one part. I get it. Some of us want to go into our Elijah season and hit hit up the wilderness for three and a half years by ourselves, but you need an Elijah type of anointing. You need a, an Elijah type of calling, Elijah type of purpose. And I'm not saying you can't have that. I'm saying know who you are and what God has destined to you. Some people say, I'm good, bro. I don't need church. I don't need a pastor. I don't need leadership. I don't need a community. They use that as, I don't, it, it could be hurt. It could have been spiritual abuse. And that's why they're not seeking counsel. It says in the multitude of counselors, this is the book of Proverbs, right? This is where the plans are established through a multiple multitude of counselors. Hebrews talks about not forsaking the gathering of the saints. If we're a body, Jeremiah chapter 3, it talks about how he has appointed shepherds over the sheep. Sheep, right? Sheep, there's there's a body. There's, there's power in community and there's unity in community. If you're not gaining counsel or community feedback accountability through the body of Christ, this might be an issue to ask, is this the Lord's? And here's the thing. I get it. There's seasons to where God wants you incubated and sanctified, but it shouldn't be a, a reason to not be able to fellowship with others, fellowship with equally yoked people. Because loneliness and what the enemy does is he wants to have you in a place where you're you're by yourself, by yourself or yourself with yourself to the point where now you're seeking for validation and so many other things when a community can come up to lift you up, encourage you, the right people. I'm not talking about your betrayers like the brothers of Joseph, right? I'm talking about disciples that, hey, they might have some things that they don't always have in common. John and Peter, Apostle Paul and Peter, you'll see that they're not always in these points where they're like fully agreed or would do what the other person is doing. But they all surrendered to Jesus and Jesus did what he had to do. No counsel or community question, is this God's will for the rest of my life? Number five is close warnings. And it's one of those things where, you know, I you get into these places in your life where that was a close one, that was a close one, this, that was a close one, right? I'm not going to share all, all these different testimonies I've had, but I've had some close encounters where it could have been death or life situations. And I always ask, was I supposed to be there, Lord? Right? Other things that I made decisions on that was a close warning to the point where it would have tra tra trajected the rest of my life. And this is even like a before Christ moment, but also while while I'm in Christ moment, it, it could happen all the time. Have you ever had moments in your life where it was like, that was a close warning? And here's the thing, these warnings from God doesn't mean it's a green light, right? A warning, these red flags cannot turn into green lights. And I, and I look at that, that's what these warnings are. And God warns us because he cares about us. It's up to us to hear, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to be sensitive to God's voice. If you ever had a close encounter or a close warning in any situation, life life situations could have been a situation that would have changed for the, the rest of your life, right? But that you know it's not God. You know that that's not the way because, again, it doesn't give you peace. It may not bear fruit. That might be a sign that this is not from God or God wants to orchestrate it and he has a better way, so seek him. Number six is it does not put God first. It's And this is obvious. It's not God's will if it doesn't put him first. OK, in fact, if it does not put him first, it's the first thing that needs to go. <laughs> OK, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Anything we put above God is an, an idol. It becomes an idol in our life. Netflix, relationships, marriages, friendships, other people's opinions, my feelings. These all could become idols that I put over God's promise and God's truth. If it does not put God first when you're making decisions, it needs to be the first thing that goes. Number seven on how to know it's not God's will, closed doors. And some people don't want to talk about the closed doors. It's like, Lord, I thank you for covering that relationship. I thank you for the rejection letter that didn't allow me to move to the next city. I thank you because that wasn't rejection. It was redirection. That wasn't 
rejection that was protection usually if it's from god and there's so many verses on hey no man can shut what god has opened what doors god has shut no man can open it is the lord and if the lord is knocking at your door it's up to us to be able to step through open it up welcome him in okay we can't be a robber in opportunities where we're hopping in the window we're breaking the side door right we're trying to go through the house in all other places but when it's right from god it shouldn't be a closed door. It should be right open and you walk right through it. It should be it should be simple. Might not always be easy to make the decision because of our mentality, but it should be a simple decision like, wow, that's from God. He opened the door. I don't have to act like a robber and hit up the side door, smack it down, break it down, crack a window just to get into the opportunity. So when closed doors come, know that, hey, this might be from the Lord. You don't have to force your way into the opportunity. You don't have to force your way into the house god bless you simply on cage i hope you guys enjoy this seven ways to know this is not god's will just some wisdom i want to drop with y'all and i really pray that the lord really does what he has to do in your life to help you to guide you to lead you seek him above it all seek him above it all we just did a video on how to operate in god's will every day check that video out check this series of god's will that we're doing on this channel i hope it blesses you gives you more clarity provision in jesus name we'll see you guys in another video bye bye